Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our final video in my 2018 Quark Catapult project. Um, in the last video, we got the rig started. Um, in this one, we're going to finish it. So, go ahead and jump right in. Um, we created some joints for our catapult arm here. And as you can tell, it is already been skinned. So, all we need to do is create a joint or a control system that will control all these joints. I'm going to, again, borrow from this control curve that I had floating back over here. I'm just going to duplicate that one off and bring it up to the front here. I'm going to F to focus it. I'm going to vertex snap it onto the vertex that hides inside these joints. I'm going to hold down V, and eventually you'll see it'll snap into the center of one of these joints. That's not quite it. Let's try that. There we go. That's where it needs to be. So now I can go ahead and scale this all down. About right there. I'm gonna, since this is facing straight up, it is kind of helpful to have these curves moving up the, the arm facing the same direction. But that's okay. I'll go ahead and leave that one there. I'm gonna freeze the transforms. I'm gonna call this one, uh, sorry, control, catapult, arm. I'll duplicate that one, move it up, freeze it straight up, and then vertex snap it onto that joint. It's important that they're on the joints because if they're not, when you go to orient them, they will be orienting based off of the control curve and not where the joint's actually facing. Okay. I'm going to call this couple find one. That way, as it duplicates out, and adds the sequential numbering up the spine, it'll keep adding those numbers in. Okay, and duplicate this one. Vertex snap it up to the top one, so I'm just holding down V, middle mouse button dragging that one up so it gets up there. Okay, and then last one, right there. That one looks good. Okay, so now we have our control curves. Now we just need to constrain them and parent them in together. So to start out with, I'll just go ahead and start the bottom down here. And I'm going to shift select the joint at the bottom there. I need to change my menu sets up here. Right now it's currently still set to modeling. I need to change this over to rigging so that I can use my constraints. My constraint option is right there. So I can go to constraint and I'm gonna be doing an orient constraint Actually, for this one, it's going to be a parent constraint because this one's actually going to move the base of the joints as well. So I'm going to do a parent constraint. Okay. And I'm going to do this for my joints. I was doing this earlier with my meshes as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock this out just in case uh, someone comes through and tries to animate on top of my joints instead of using the control curves. This will prevent them from accidentally destroying the constraints I have. I'll just go ahead and lock selected. So I can still oh actually I have to take that back. It works for the meshes, it isn't going to work for the controls. I can't correct it. Unlock selected. So there we go. All right, going up the chain here, we're going to, on the next one here, we're going to constrain this one as well. So, but instead of doing a parent constraint, we're going to do an orient constraint. Open up the submenu for orient constraint, and underneath maintain offsets, make sure this is checked, otherwise this joint will be conformed to the orientation of the control curve, which right now it should be based in the same way, but just so there's no movement of it, we're just gonna go ahead and make sure maintain offsets is checked, hit apply. Okay, go on to the next one here. Same thing, just hit apply. And then select the next curve, and the last joint. Oh, okay. There we go, and hit apply. Okay, so they are now all constrained. Now, you think they would be good, but you know, if you rotate this, you can see that we got still a little bit of a problem. The reason why is because these controls aren't moving and this one's moving, so it's moving the joints, 
but they're still orienting the same direction as their orient constraint controllers are orienting. So what we need to do is we need to parent these guys down the chain like as if they were joints. So we'll slice the top one up here. Shift select the one below it, hit C for parent. Select this one here. Shift select the one below it, hit C for parent. And it's sometimes confusing for my students because when they hit C for parent, it goes back to the child and the child remains highlighted, but the parent doesn't. So they want to go back here and try doing it again. But as you click down here, you can see the rest of the chain has been highlighted. So you know you did it right when you click down on the one right below it and the ones right above it still highlight. But if you click down here, you can see that these ones aren't. This one hasn't been parented in yet. So child, parent, keep the parent. Okay. There we go. So now I can go ahead and move my capital arm and it works just fine. I can grab any of these ones here and add some, some bow to the... the catapult arm as if it was going to flick for animation and it works perfect. I see what's going on. All right, guys, I'm going to, you guys can skip past this if you want to, but what I'm going to do is uh, undo something because I forgot to freeze the transforms before I did this whole process. So that means that I need to go through. Okay, that one's good. This one isn't, so I need to. Freeze the transforms on this right now. It won't let me. I guess it will. Sometimes it won't let you just because there's a constraint going on. Um, so I'll just go through then and just select each of these controllers and just freeze the transforms. Okay, so these ones are all good. The joints, you can't do anything about. The joints have to maintain that position. But if any of your constraints aren't zeroed out, you want those all to be zeroed out. Okay, everything should be good now. All right, so moving on here. Next, we got to deal with, oh, I guess there's one last bit we got to deal with here. Because this, if we move this, this is not going with at the moment. So what we got to do, here there's actually a duplicate going on here, okay? I don't know when that happened, but we'll fix that. Um, but this main controller here needs to be brought into here. I'll we'll parent this one in. So what I can do then is just pull this off. Apparently this must have been duplicated at some point. I'm not sure how that happened, but pretty much all this is well, actually before I do that, let's bring the stakes in with as well. So I'll take the stake control, parent that in with the master control to keep parent. That way when I move this forward and find out what was actually duplicated in very easily figure that out. Okay. Yep, there's duplicates of these guys. Okay, that's that makes my job a little easier. I'll have to just pull these guys, the extra ones off. Now I can just select all of this and hit delete. And I can just bring this thing back. That's right, even I make mistakes at times. Apparently in this lesson, I made a couple. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring these guys back into position. So I'll zero out the translates so they snap back into their original position. All right, there we go. All right, so the last bit that we got to do is we got to create some forward movement of these wheels. Um, so to begin with, we'll just go ahead and select all four of the wheels, and we'll just parent them in to the main control. So then when I grab the main control, they come with. Now, one problem you'll see right away is that as I'm animating this going forward, that they don't turn. So 
so you have to animate them turning on their own, which that's that's a little bit difficult because then you have to go ahead and figure out what the actual um, board movement is and then make it match by the rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called an expression editor to create an expression that will drive our wheels for us based on the movement of our controller. So what I will do is go to Windows, Animation Editor, Expression Editor. And this is where having your names exactly as they should be. So Mesh Wheel, FR, and then you have Control, Catapult, Main. Knowing those is important. For the fact that they're all camel cases, you want to make sure that if, if one's capital and one's not, this will get you kind of screwed up if you don't do this right. I mean, everything about this is important, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one, Mesh, Wheel, FR, you see where it says Object. And then we're going to be animating, let's go ahead and test this out. We want to animate it turning in the Rotate X. So we're going to go over to the Attributes here, we'll select Rotate X, and you'll see it pops up and gets added to the selected object attributes part here. We're just going to copy this part here, hit Control C, go down here, hit Control V. Okay, and we're going to say we're, this is going to be equal to Control uh, Catapult Main, and this one's going to be uh, dot. Translate Z, and this is going to be times 100 divided by 3.14 semicolon. So this is going to be kind of like code. If you know the semicolon at the end, it won't work right. So if this does work right, if I spelled everything correctly, um, over here in the rotate X, there should be a little purple marker that's about to pop up. Go ahead and test that out. Hit create. Okay, there's my little purple marker. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and test that out. We'll go ahead and take this and look at that. As I move it, it rotates forward. Great. Okay. We have to do this to all four of these guys. So let's go ahead and see if I can borrow some of this uh, for this one here. Let's recopy this part. Control C. I'm going to select this one over here. Let's go down to the expression right away, hit control V, and then where it says go over to you see how the mesh wheel right RR. We're gonna do the rotate X again. Again, I'll have to reset that in there. There we go. Um, and I'm gonna take the, this part here, control C, and then I'm just gonna put that right over top of where this one is, control V, and hit create. There we go. Go ahead and test that out. Make sure it's rotating the right way. Sometimes it won't be rotating the right way. And when that happens, you just have to put a negative value in the expression. Okay, let's go ahead and redo this one again. So we're going to go to this guy. We're going to do the rotate X. We're going to hit Control V. Okay. And I want this one. Oops, I see what I did wrong. Uh, let's go back over here and borrow that one again. Over here. Rotate X, borrow this, Control C, go over here, Rotate X, Control V, and then I'll take this guy and replace it right here. Control V, hit Create. Okay, let's see if that works okay. It's always testing. Yeah, here we go. Here's a good example of it not working right. Or facing the rotating the wrong way. So what I need to do is just go to the rotate X and in front of the 100, let's just put a minus symbol. That'll flip the direction that the value is being outputted. So we'll go ahead and hit edit. So now when I go over here and select this control main, it now rotates the right way. Okay, that's good. So let's continue onward. We're going to Again, borrow this line of code, Control C. I'll go over to this one here. Go to the Rotate X. Put down that line of code back in here. Then I can copy this bit here, Control C. And then go over here and replace it right there. Control V and hit Create. And there's our last bit. So now our wheels are all set up. 
where as I animate this thing going forward, it will go forward with the catapult. Okay, so that's good. That works great. Okay. So last bit of our our project. I'm gonna get rid of this extra one here. I don't need that anymore. Um, to make fireballs. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first start out by creating ourselves a ground plane. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop that into our scene. Hit R for scale. I'm just going to scale this up quite a bit. Uh, about like so. That should be good. Be a little bit bigger. Okay. Good. Now some important things to do before we even jump into this is since we're going to be doing physics with the fireball, we need to make sure that our animation editor is set up to be able to deal with physics um, and not skip frames. So we're going to go to the little animation controller here. And right now mine is already set up correctly. 24 frames per second, that's fine. Playback speed, this is where it's important. Uh, make sure that this says play every frame. If it says 24 frames times one, half frames, double frames, um, that's where you can get in trouble because it could skip past some of the, the physics if you end up having some errors. Um, so make sure free play is not turned on. Um, that will not give you an accurate feedback either. 24 frames, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Close that down. Okay. Let's go ahead and change this from rigging. We're gonna go over to effects. Okay. And let's start out by taking this ground plane and turning it into a passive collider. So to do that, we're going to go to where it says end cloth, and we're going to go to create passive collider. Okay, easy as that. It's already a passive collider. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that it's going to behave the way that we think it's going to. So we're going to select the ground plane, go to the attribute editor, and the first thing that pops up is this end rigid shape one tab. If it doesn't, just go ahead and navigate to the tab that says end rigid shape one, where it says solver display. Currently, it's set to off. Um, we want to turn it on so we can see how thick our collider is. Okay, so there's our collider. So that looks like it's probably, might be a little bit too thick. Um, you can see how it's kind of coming up on the wheels a few inches. We might want this to be a little bit lower. We can bring it down to where it's right about there. That way it's kind of still a little bit into the, the end of the wheel just a little bit. That's okay. Um, if it's too thick, it'll look like is the ball bouncing before it even hits the ground. Okay, this yellow bit doesn't render. This is just a preview so you can see what, how thick your collider is. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the collision thickness display color, and we're back to what we're dealing with the ground plane. Okay, next we're going to create our fireball. So we're gonna go ahead and create ourselves a sphere. Okay, I'm gonna bring it over here, and we're gonna. Also, before we do that, we're going to make sure we name our ground. So let's go over here and call this ground. And then our sphere, we're going to call this uh, fireball. Okay. Now we're going, now the order of this creation is important. If you create the fire before you create the end cloth, um, you can end up having some errors where it won't necessarily work the way you think it's going to. Um, fire may not follow the, follow the fireball. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Um, we're going to go to end cloth and we're going to start out by creating a end cloth right here. Okay, let's go ahead and test that out. Make sure it's working okay. There it goes. And did it fall to the ground? Nope, it hit the ground and squashed like a piece of cloth. Okay, so that's, that's predictable. That's what I thought was going to happen. Um, now we're going to go to the attribute editor and tell it what kind of cloth we want it to be, so that way it'll hold its shape. So we're going to go to where it says presets, and we're going to click on presets, and we're going to change it from uh, what it currently is. We're going to go to, let's say, concrete, and we're going to say replace. Okay, so now it has been replaced with concrete. Um, don't worry about this stuff down here. This stuff is just telling you how the material is going to behave. So and if you want to uh, do some adjustments in the in the channel box, it gives you some information on that as well. We are not going to get into this the notes though. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview and see how this is going to work. So we're going to hit play. There it goes. Ooh. Seems like the rigidity of it can be changed a little bit. It probably shouldn't have 
crumple it quite like that. It'd be because of where it hit, though. Let's go ahead and bring that up. Let's see if I turn it on its side if it still kind of damages like that. Hmm. To be honest, I've never had concrete kind of behave that way. Let's go ahead and try adding something else to it. So we're going to do concrete. Um, add some solid rubber to it. Oh, you know what? I bet this is because of the collider. Let's go ahead and add some vegetation to the collider and see if that helps. There we go. So what was happening was the ball was going into the collider, and since the vision thickness wasn't thick enough, um, it was um, matching some of the geometry. This is an end cloth is supposed to deform a little bit. Um, it was just crushing it and it wasn't allowing it to bounce back. So that fixed that. Um, let's go back to frame one here. Okay, so our fireball is reacting with physics the way we want to, falling down, and it bounces on the ground. Okay, like that. So you can uh, do a variation of concrete and rubber. Those two should work just fine together. Okay, so from here, now I want to set the thing on fire. This is the last thing we're going to be doing here. So we're going to go to effects, and we're going to open up the fire part here. And we're going to do, see here, it's called fireball. So we're going to go where it says object on fire, and we'll call this fireball. Okay, and go ahead and hit apply, and close. Test that out. There we go. And you can see that the fire is following the fireball around. Now, if you did it in the opposite order where you created the fire first and then the fireball, the fire won't follow the fireball. It'll start in the same place, but it won't follow it. Okay. Some other things to note if you're screwing out the fire settings is that you need to make sure that the fire emitter type is still set to surface so that it comes off the surface of the fireball. Um, you can always adjust the fire density, radius, fire intensity. Um, fire speed. Um, don't spread the direction since it's coming from the surface. Um, it, you just want to always go to the Y. Otherwise, it looks like gravity's kind of messed up because it's going to be, it, you want to go up. Unless you want, like, there to be some wind, you can do that. You've got a little bit of fire turbulence. I leave fire scale alone. Otherwise, the, the sprites they use to create the fire won't look right. Okay. Let's go ahead and stop this in midair. And... Let's take a look and see what we're looking at here. So um, first, I'm going to go to my render settings, make sure Arnold isn't turned on because Arnold doesn't handle the fire very well. Go to my software. Okay. Go ahead and do a preview render and see what that looks like. There we go. Got ourselves a nice little fire going on. Okay. Go ahead and close that down. All right. So our fire is just about good to go. Um, we just need to get it set up to where it's going to work with our catapult. So let's go ahead and bring our catapult arm back. On frame one, I'm going to rotate this guy back, get it to the setup position, hit S to start it from right there. On frame, let's say 15, I'll hit S again. And what I did there is basically gave some time for the physics to get set up for when the fireball is going to be landing in the net before I fire it. And then from 50 to, let's say, uh, let's do our 15 to 30. We're going to do a launch like that. Okay. I'm not going to do any of the flexing right now. I just want to demo how this is going to work. So it's going to keep it kind of simple. Okay. Um, I'll take my fireball. I'm going to bring it over here to my catapult arm. Okay. You may want to have your fireball bigger than mine currently is, but that's okay for now. All right. So next thing I want to do is I want to create a a uh, pseudo cup to hold this because obviously, like you know, this is going to have some issues when it comes to this whole pinball. ball. Um, and really, this has issues anyway, just with how flat it is. So we create this little cup here that's going to basically hold it and kind of give you the look that you're after without having to deal with the complications that come with it. So I'll scale this thing up so that it is about like so. Before I rotate it, I want to delete off the top half of it. We'll go to face mode. Let's delete off the top half of the cup. Okay. Bring 
this up a little bit, rotate it. And just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so from here, I'm going to again go to mcloth create passive collider. Okay, turn on solver thickness display. And this is too thin for sure. I've done this enough to know so. Um, so we're going to go to our thickness. I'm just going to dial it up to about right there. That looks good. That way that our ball doesn't accidentally clip through the actual collider. Okay, turn off collision thickness. Now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to parent it into this control. So I'm just going to shift select this control here. So child first, parent second, 50 for parent. Now, as I move this, anywhere this goes, this also goes. Okay. So now let's go ahead and give this a little test run. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. We'll hit play, settles in there, and it takes off and throws my fireball. Perfect. All right, so last thing for our lesson is like we don't want this this to be shown right you don't want this, this nasty cup here um, what we want to do is turn off the visibility for it now that it works correctly and I'll call this uh, cup slider just in case I find it inside my my outliner I'm like what is that um, I know what that is now um, so I'll just go over towards the visibility and just turn the visibility to off okay so now it still works but you just can't see it so I can hit play, it falls, and it goes in there and goes flying. And we'll do one final render just for the fun of it. There goes my fireball. Cool. If I really want to add a little bit extra to it, I could actually take this ball here itself, go to add. Favorite material. Uh, let's do a blend. Go to the blend, go to the color, do something kind of in the hot range here. Maybe reddish. There we go. Something like that. And then I can bump up incandescence, bump up the ambient color. Okay. I'm not going to deal with the special effects. I could add some glow to it if I wanted to as well. Maybe I will go ahead and add a smidge glow. Okay, let's go and see what that looks like. There, so now it's not gray. It's got like more like a reddish color to it. So that adds just a little bit extra variety to it. Okay, so turn off the sRGB gamma. The fire actually looks a little bit better. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, that is the conclusion of our catapult lesson for my 2018. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next project.